Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Bless you. While you're seated, you're going to pray in one minute and say, Lord, I don't want to waste my time. I truly want to see transformation in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I do not just want to waste my time listening to Rema upon Rema, learning, learning all the cliches, learning all the powerful words, learning all the vocabularies, creating a form of religion without a sincere passion there are many of us who attend at least three or four programs every week but the fruit of the transformation is not evident in our lives we still talk the way we used to talk we still behave the way we still behave there is nothing that shows that there is a culture of the kingdom working in us Ancient words ever drew, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh, and words in power. ancient words ever true changing me and changing you we have come with open hearts oh let the ancient words in one more time. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Open hearts, oh let the ancient words be one. Change me. This is always my prayer. Koinonia is about change. The symbol of koinonia in a man's life is change, transformation. 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 Let there be change. Hallelujah. I'm going to teach tonight briefly and then we'll pray. And voice of his presence. And voice of his presence. Praise the bread of life, Emmanuel, God with us, the one who saves. Praise the cup of life, that glorious spring that washes our sins away and voice of his presence
Matthew 5. Help us, Spirit of the Living God. He's the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Living God. You're the Holy Ghost, Scepter of the King of Kings. You're the Holy Ghost, Seal of the Age. And voice of his presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All through scripture, we see that God's idea of the church or the believer has been to create an envoy that will communicate certain things that are in the mind of the spirit to the human race for every season hallelujah an envoy is is the highest governmental representative it's a governmental representative that is sent on behalf of a government on a mission an assignment hallelujah if we need to send certain people one of our brothers is getting married tomorrow and we're sending a few people they are envoys hallelujah whatever we stand to represent is what we want to see them promote there yeah. if we have a gift for the couple what happens we give them the gift and we trust them with that gift hallelujah with an assignment to go and deliver that gift hallelujah and there are certain people that God has anointed to be envoys of his presence. Carriers, distributors to infect territories with the presence of God. The power, the culture of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And tonight we are going to explore that understanding. Say after me, I am an envoy. Say it, I am an envoy a representative i'm an ambassador mean it from your heart say i am an envoy hallelujah matthew 5 jesus himself taught us this in chapter 5 from verse 13 he said ye are the salt of the earth but if the salt has lost its savour, with what shall it be salted he said it is thereafter good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ready? 14. One to read. Ye are the light of the world. Stop. He said, I am sending you as an envoy into a system that is characterized by darkness. Darkness in scripture talks of confusion, talks of death, talks of sin. Whatever does not have the charisma of God in it is darkness. And the Bible says, ye are the light. It didn't say you have the light. It said you are the light. Hallelujah. You are a city that is set, not like a city. You are a city. You are being elevated upon a hill. He said you cannot be hidden. A Christian, a walking Christian, is not just one who has given his life to Jesus Christ. It's not just one who prays in tongues. It's not just one who is in ministry. It's not just one who avoids sin. Great. All of these things are great. It's not even just ones who have rema. No. A Christian is one who has taken the mandate of the kingdom as a personal responsibility. He has come into the understanding that he's not just a son, he's not just a servant, he is an envoy. He has come into a place of kingdom responsibility. That not only have we received of God, but we have been mandated to deliver something. Hallelujah. Envoys of his presence. 
when Jesus walked upon the earth, the Bible says, we beheld his glory as of the one of the only begotten. The Bible says he was full of grace and truth. And everywhere he went, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. Is that true? And with power. And he went about doing what? He was an envoy of the goodness of God. Because God was with him. He carried the divine presence of God. And he demonstrated the reality of that divine presence. He had a culture. The Bible says every time he taught, men were astonished. They said, what wisdom is this? What authority is this? We have not seen this in this fashion. Hallelujah. When Jesus walked to you and you were sick, there will be a dramatic demonstration of the revelation of the kingdom. He went to Bethesda and saw a man who had lain there 38 years. The Bible says he looked at him and he said, uh, what did he even tell him? What was the question again? He said, do you want that I'll make you whole? And he said, there is no man that would help me. As soon as I want to move to the, to the, to the, to the waters, somebody else will jump into it. And listen, look at an envoy. He said, no problem. In other words, all this you're grumbling is not necessary. I have come, cheer up. He said, pick up your bed and go. One minute. A problem of 38 years dissolved in one minute. That is the character of an envoy. He steps into a place and begins to legislate on me. No grammar, no long story, the reality of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Charles and Francis, hunter of blessed memory, great men and women of God, one time they had so much of the presence of God upon them. They entered a meeting and there were people on wheelchairs and they start. They, they didn't even tell any story. No prayer, no nothing. They brought an atmosphere and a culture and they demonstrated this flawlessly. 100 people, they lifted them out of the wheelchair. 100. Envoys of his presence. Hallelujah. When Naaman was afflicted, the Bible tells us in 2 Kings chapter 5 that Naaman was the captain of, 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 of Syria. He was a great and mighty man. The Bible says, but he was leprous. And on account of his leprosy, when they came and fought the nation of Israel, the Bible says they took a little slave girl. Is that true? And in the passage of time, there was one strange envoy who was a seer who does not just go out anyhow. The Bible called him Elisha. Hallelujah. And the little girl told the captain, he said, oh, that you would just follow me. There is somebody I know who can help you. And the man sluggishly said, are you serious? You don't know my situation. Hallelujah. And cut the long story short, they met the king. And listen, when the king was afraid, nobody told Elisha that the man, Elisha was watching like a television from his room. And he said, quickly, tell the king, why is your heart casted? Let him come and know that there is an envoy. That there is a prophet. This land is not barren. There are ambassadors who are alive and strong. Who will not let the powers of darkness lord it over people. God did not leave himself across this territory without a witness. He said send him to come. And when he came, Elijah did not even go out. He sent Gehazi. He said, go and tell him it's a simple case. Go and watch seven times and go back free. Ah, that simple, an envoy is speaking. There is a backing behind him. Hallelujah. One time there was scarcity and Jesus, listen, Jesus was trying to teach the disciples the mindset of being envoys. And when the people had not eaten, Jesus looked at the disciples. He said, go and give them food. Come on now, Jesus. Ah, the disciples said, no, this is not part of our ministry. Our ministry here is to help you. Don't disgrace us here. There is no food. These people are plenty. Jesus was teaching them something. He said, every time you see people think of dispensing, don't just think of receiving. 
you are an envoy wherever you go go as light study the terrain of darkness and solve the problem don't join in the sympathy hallelujah are you getting blessed tonight that you are an envoy of his presence god has mandated you with an unction with an anointing your rema will not help the world until there is a demonstration of the practical reality of the fact that god lives in a man and the apostle calls it the mystery of godliness that god can dwell in a man such that you see an ordinary man but he's not just ordinary he's carrying a backing that this earth cannot speak the man tells you you are blessed and all the forces of nature align themselves and make that word come to pass that's an envoy hallelujah there are many of our homes listen to me that are under demonic yokes there are many of our family members that if no one arises to help them they will die you are that envoy god seeks envoys that he will send to different territories hallelujah praise the lord i've had the privilege of counseling people week after week and oh what joy fills my heart the moment the people begin to come one by one i am conscious of the fact that i am an envoy and you see them coming and crying oh man of god the devil has oppressed us and i tell them cheer up i don't tell them cheer up as stories i don't tell them cheer up as many men of god just comfort people without result they say don't worry uh, our lord and god no envoy there is nothing that shows that you are an envoy darkness comes and the person goes back with that darkness we must contend for levels where if men meet you just once they will know they met an ambassador don't get emotional about this message and not do anything about it hallelujah the family came to me for counseling one of their sons had given the family a very big problem and when they came i told them i said it's okay this is the devil here hallelujah in less than one minute the devil is casted out i prophesy blessings to the family it was not up to two days their father bought a new car an envoy this is not trial and error you have become a portal for heaven to find expression at every given time hallelujah praise the lord do you believe that there is a dimension of kingdom assignment that has been committed unto you to be a demonstrator of the presence, the reality, the culture, the life of the kingdom? I vowed to God and I cried years ago and I still cried. I said, Lord, I don't want to be those many preachers with rema that cannot be defended. As a student, before you graduate, there's something called defense. All the stories you have been talking, you are going to stand and say it before people that matter. Is that true? They are going to give you a topic that you think validates you for graduation. Oh, Jesus is this, the same yesterday, today and forever. He can do this, he can do that. And they bring somebody oppressed and you are just looking and wondering. This is why we teach you these things. So that you'll be equipped. Oh, I've had testimonies of many of our people and I've been so blessed. The destruction they are doing to the kingdom of darkness in their spheres. Some of them just went home. They had been waiting. This strike, as bad as it is, has given an opportunity for some people to arrange Satan in their family once and for all. They went home as envoys. Hallelujah. The koinonia teachings that we send by the Spirit of God they go as envoys of power envoys of the presence of god that's why a lot of people have been touched that we may never see while we are sleeping the bible says abel though dead yet speak it for as long as the jurisdiction of our christianity is just to receive get blessed find a life partner 
be very happy. Get breakthrough. We will never be relevant as far as the advancement of God's kingdom is concerned. Are you listening to me? Unfortunately, this is what the congregation of the Nigerian church is predominantly made of. People who come to God with numerous problems, God solves the problem and they don't want any kingdom responsibility again. All they want is to sit down and let a great man of God keep displaying the anointing, keep doing everything and the people keep sitting there. Are you going to church? Yes, I'm going to church. You go. No. See, listen, brothers and sisters, no matter how much we love people, not everybody in this city is going to be able to come here. Are you getting me? Is that true? No matter how we love people, there are many people. Sometimes people send us messages and say, I wish, I wish that Koinonia will come and have a program or will have a program somewhere. And I tell them, who gave you our number? And they now say, oh, a brother somewhere. I say, go and tell that person to pray for you. Hallelujah. Take the step and fail honorably. God will bless you. If you are ashamed and embarrassed because of your ego, forget about being a champion in the kingdom. Many of you, this is what is stopping us. Hallelujah. My own blood sister did not have a job for a long time. I knew that this thing was demonic. I just have not been home for a very long time. And when I was going home, I, I, I had the opportunity to meet her and I prayed with her. I told her, I said, she was trying to give me explanation. I said, don't worry. The explanations are not necessary. Believe me, I know what the problem is. And I prayed for her. And that was the end of it. Praise the Lord. She got a job in Benway State. When can you look at somebody, a barren woman, and say, Madam, you are trying to come for Koinonia. They are not around, but they have been teaching us this thing. And Madam, will you allow me to pray? She will look at you and say, please, I want Josh. Please. I know what, I'm, I'm serious about this child. I'm not playing here. Don't come and play with my womb. No. You say, madam, just allow me pray. And you stand and say, Lord, you are real. And I want you to demonstrate the reality of your kingdom. Some of you say, what if she doesn't give birth? Did you collect money? Did you collect money? You get into trouble if you collected money. Did you collect money? It's just say, madam, let me pray for you. And some of you, for the first time, as you lay hands on the people, suddenly you will see a demonstration of the kingdom. And the person comes back and says, I have not slept in one week. That simple word you said, be healed. I have been sleeping like a baby. And then you know that the kingdom has come in that environment. This has nothing to do with MOG. Are you getting my point? It should be your default life. Do you believe what I'm saying? Look at your loved ones. Brothers and sisters, please look at me. There are some of you in your families, there is nobody who is born again. Be honest with me, is that true? You are the first person God brought out. Who do you think will go and change them? Somebody else? There are many of you, there are forces of witchcraft. I went for a program and when they finished the program, some people just ran to me while I was counseling and they told me that their mother just broke her leg. Immediately the mother broke the leg. Some of the neighbors, they said, oh yeah, get chicken. Get chicken quick. I said, what is chicken having to do with this broken leg? They said, if you want this leg to heal, get chicken quick. I remember one time my mother hit, um, I think she, I, I don't know what happened. She hit, uh, is it a goat or something? And people, hey, stop. Say she look for one error. She must look for one error or something and put in the mouth of the of the the the, the bed or the goat or whatever. Say if you don't do it, ha. A time came, they came to dig a well in our house. They said, sir, we are finished. We need chicken. There's a way we do it for water to come out. You are the envoy that will stop that nonsense in your territory. A bishop in this country, a bishop in this country, baths his children with blood before giving them out for marriage. And one of his daughters called me one time and said, this thing happened to my elder sister. I know what is happening in their house now. The lady cannot give birth. What is all these things? And they want to do it. Bishop! 
the man told her, you better come home. This thing has been like that. That there are some people that are doing traditional Christianity. I hope you are. You, you, they are. They are born again. But enter their room. There's one ancient arrow that they gave them. And one jazz that they put in the bow. And some candles. Eh? And some ropes. They don't use them. But they have kept them. When they go and get tough. The tough get going. They know how to go and pull it out. Many families have not totally divorced themselves from a lot of cultural things. There are still all kinds of witchcraft festivals and cultural activities that happen in our homes. People are happy. They are comfortable. All kinds of devilish sacrifices are given. You are that envoy that God is raising. Listen, until your, your Christianity begins to confront the gates of hell, you are still joking. If your Christianity has not yet begun to pose a threat to the gate of hell, then you are still playing. There are some of us ladies here, nobody in your family gets married. Will you not be the first person to say, not only will I break that, I will break it first from my life and go back and release everyone that belongs to me from that captivity. Some of us is the cause of poverty. Right from wherever it has come, to, even if you get job in presidency, you won't be able to buy a bicycle. Why you will not explain? Because there are all kinds of yokes. Hallelujah. And God is empowering you and sending you. Everywhere the Lord grants me the opportunity to go and minister. Every time it's time for the ministration, I just begin to feel happy for that ministry and that territory because I am coming as an envoy. I know that there is a government that backs me and they that with me are mighty and strong. Everywhere, the Bible says he went, he was doing good. Have you been doing good? Please listen to me and take it seriously. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill. Say, I am an envoy. Say it, I am an ambassador. I have a mandate to take the presence, the culture, and the life of heaven to every sphere of influence. If you are not doing this, then you are not advancing the kingdom. Now look at me. I want to show you a very big key and then we'll pray. There are some of you that may say, Sir, but sincerely, I have been taking steps. It's just that it has not been working. How many of you belong to that category? Tell the truth. You have been taking steps. Don't raise your hand if you have not taken any step. I took a step. I was bold. I made an audacious statement at home. I had to go back and cover my head with blankets. Don't be ashamed. How many of us are in that category? You've taken steps. At least you've said something. You prayed for somebody. Nothing happened. But at least you did something. Let me see your hands. Listen to what I'm about to show you because you will be very surprised. I want to activate something right now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen. Please look up. It's one thing to know that you are an envoy of the kingdom. It's another thing to understand the keys that govern the release of God's presence and God's power. I have seen anointed men of God get frustrated when it comes to the point of demonstrating what they teach. When it comes to Bible studies, when it comes to sharing the word, talk is cheap. But when it comes to walking in the reality and bringing men into that experience, this is where a lot of people become powerless. Why is this so? Because if the kingdom of God is all about sharing and teaching, there are some of us right now, there is even no need to be pursuing again because honestly God has opened our eyes to deep things. But there is nothing as frustrating as talking without authority to work in present tense consistently and continually. You come and say, every power in this place, we are going to pray. There are demons keeping people down and you are going to be released. And then at the end of it, you say, all right, 
I, I hope that this message blessed you. I hope you were motivated and challenged. And the sister said, Ah, what about the oppression? You have been making me rejoice. Hallelujah. Or the man of God sees somebody on wheelchair and just dodges as if he didn't see the person. He says, Yes, what did you even say is your problem? He says, My own is head. He said, Come, power. Brother, we must contend. Listen. We have not all arrived there, but there should be a, a passion in our heart that we will not stop until we get there. Can I tell you something? One demonstration of the reality of the kingdom will solve 20 or millions of talk. There, there are too much talkatives in the body. Habalists don't talk too much. They demonstrate. Is that true? A priest can be in a city, he cannot even speak very well. Yet the ripple effect of his influence and his presence is being felt. You do anything without inviting him, you will fail woefully. And then the failure will make you to come and visit him. And you say, it's not done this way. With this little lesson, let it be known to you that I may be in this coven, but I'm more influential than your community leaders. Many of us are looking for pulpit. For people to feel the effect. Jesus did not have a pulpit. Stephen did not have a pulpit. They had presence. Everybody say presence. You don't need a pulpit to let people see the power and the glory of God. You don't need a ministry, a title. What you need is an undeniable presence. That principalities and powers must submit to. I don't know if the woman is in this place but just permit me to share a bit of the testimony a woman came to me for counseling and I was surprised I've heard about this but I've never seen it one on one hallelujah a woman who came for counseling who gave birth to a baby it was a still birth but the baby came out with the face of a monkey and the body of a human being Welcome to planet earth where everything is possible. Why is it possible? Because there is God, there is Satan. Both are real and are walking. You are the only one who is left. You are not walking. Where that kind of evil can happen, that a spirit can create an imprint of itself and it will materialize in this realm. Where are the envoys? Where are the envoys that are represented across families? The Bible says... That in, in, Psalm, in Psalm 82, it was a summoning. God was summoning the mighty men. He said, the Lord stands in the congregation of the mighty. He had to call them and say, what is going on? He said, you have allowed the earth. You know not, neither do they understand. He says, so they grope in darkness. The earth is out of course. Where are the people who are supposed to bring order to the earth? He said, have I not said, ye are gods? And all of you are children of the Most High. He said, but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. Where are the envoys? Some of you are only benefiting, getting blessed. The devil comes in, you open the door, he enters our families, wreck the lives of people, and we are just watching. Can't you pray? Where is your prayer language? Where is the grace to lock yourself and say, There is an envoy in this house. There is an envoy. The devil is trying to put your family under some kinds of things. Give yourself three days prayer and fasting and tell yourself you are contending to release certain things. But we have a bunch of lazy Christians. Who all they want is their personal comfort. Three days, ah, Josh, if it was six to twelve, I can manage. Everybody say, I'm an envoy. Say it one more time, I'm an envoy. Listen, how many members in your family do you want to see the devil finish them before you know God is speaking to you? I'm talking to someone here. How many people in your community are you not seeing the handwriting of Satan everywhere? What are you doing about it? There are families that don't tithe and they are dying 
an envoy have you ever gone to tell them listen the reason why this thing is not working is you are violating certain principles of the kingdom if you tell them and they refuse no problem the bible says how shall they hear until someone be sent until there is a preacher praise the lord i refuse to allow the devil have a field day in my family hallelujah these horns that are judging the lives of people judging destinies that's why it gives me pleasure to pray for people I can pray and minister to people with all my heart from morning till night. Because this is what we are anointed for. We are not just anointed to wear suits. We are anointed to do the works of the kingdom. And can I tell you something? This is the mandate of everybody here. To dislodge the gates of hell. I went home and my younger sister was telling me she said i've not slept for days i said I, I, what is all this one with my younger sister and i prayed for her i gave her communion to go and take she said as soon as she took that communion she slept in a way she has not slept in a long time i said this is a signature to principalities and powers he's in joss trace him with a spiritual gps he has come to joss that means the powers of darkness must bow there are many of us that need to stand and say wherever I go the presence of God is there and because the presence of God is there there must be order in that place hallelujah praise the Lord he is able more than able to accomplish what concerns me today he is able more than able to handle everything that comes my way he is able He is able, he is more than able. He's able to make me what he wants me to do. Now look up. I want to show you a very powerful key. For years, I prayed for people with certain sicknesses and infirmity. And I found out that these people were not just healed. There were others that were healed. God was seeing breakthrough here and there. But there, there seemed like there were certain situations that would not bow. Every time I was praying for the people, I felt helpless myself. You know, there's a way you can pray for somebody. You know that nothing really happened. It's just that if you want to lie to yourself. There's a way you lay hands and you are praying for somebody. At the end of the prayer, even the person is looking at you. You know that nothing really happened. That was the situation. And many preachers can get comfortable and say, after all, I'm doing well. There are ministerial doors opening. But I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, what is wrong? I have seen preachers walk to a sick body in less than one minute. One minute. Hallelujah. I was in a crusade ground. When I watched Reinhard Bonke with my own eyes, I was there for six hours. I helped to carry some of the people who were sick because I said I must get this anointing. He casually finished preaching and he took a cup of water and devils were just shaking, waiting for a command. And this guy jokingly, without sweating, blind eyes be opened. Deaf ears be open. Cripples walk. I saw it. It's not that they told me. Somebody we willed. I saw this thing. They were lifting the person. Everybody was trying to touch the person. To stand up. I joined with my hand. I said whether I'm contributing to it or not. And this guy stood up and began to walk. 
brothers and sisters it's not that i've never seen cripples walk but let me tell you there is something about coming near a real miracle and verifying it for yourself hallelujah i saw blind eyes open i saw a lot of things happen i said lord something is not fair in this equation and whatever it is i will go and find out how can a man casually lean on a pulpit and command eyes to open command ears to open and the devil is helpless at his command and i'm here sweating over certain issues and they are just not working that means the problem is not from god the problem is certainly from our end here and i went and i began to explore god wants to answer somebody's question right now i want to show you a powerful mystery never forget it thank you jesus matthew 16 blessed be the name of the lord as you open it just pray in tongues arise shine your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you this is what will happen to somebody this night you will arise your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you you will arise your light is come tonight god will show you a key Glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Prophesy to yourself one more time. I will arise. My light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Sing it one more time. I will arise and shine. Arise. The glory of the Lord. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Matthew 16. Jesus showed us something powerful. A mighty key that will open you to a door of the demonstration of power and of the miraculous. Please don't trivialize what you are about to hear. Let the eyes of someone be open, my God. Let the eyes of someone be open. Hallelujah. Listen. Now look up, please. Verse 13. Sida marataka shila makuratakaria. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, listen. Jesus had been walking with his disciples. Let me have two or three disciples. I am Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus, follow me. Jesus went everywhere with these people. Is that true? They watched him demonstrate miracles. They saw a lot of things. These guys were amazed. They saw the sea, the waves. They saw the way situations were helpless at the presence of Jesus. And Jesus said, Gentlemen, I always hear you conversing. He said, who do men say that I am? They see this mighty man doing miracles. And I'm sure they have been talking. Some have said he's fake. Some have said this guy may be one Belzebub somewhere. He said, who do they say I am? And the disciples were happy, verse 14. The Bible says that they were so excited because it was a secret question they had been asking themselves. And they said, some say you are John the Baptist. Why? Because John the Baptist had been caught in the prison. And they didn't see him some say you are john the baptist some say you are elijah because the bible says before the great and terrible day of the lord malachi 4 elijah the spirit of prophecy will come so you are that manifestation of elijah and others said jeremiah the weeping prophet who wrote a lot about the lamentations of of the spirit of god he said oh you are just one of the prophets and then he laughed now follow me he said all right 
I have heard what they say. You have worked with me. You have seen me do miracles. You participated. What do you say that I am? Okay, they say I'm a prophet. Fine, they are wrong. But you, you saw the miracle. They said it was fake. But you, you were in Koinonia. You saw the demons. You saw them being casted out. It's not something that you watch on TV that you say it was. He said, in light of all that you have seen, what is your conclusion about me? He said, what do you say that I am? Listen. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. Next verse. And Jesus said unto him, hmm, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, son of Jonah, he said, for flesh and blood has that means this operation is not in the realm of flesh and blood. If you ever want to walk in it, flesh and blood cannot deliver this dimension of result. He said, This revelation you've had now, it is not by flesh and blood. Are you getting me? Flesh and blood has not revealed it to you. He said, But my father, which is in heaven, listen. Peter, you know why Jesus asked them? Jesus needed to ask them to initiate a principle that he was going to teach the body of Christ. Verse 18. He said, and I say unto you, thou art Peter, listen, and upon this rock, what rock? The rock of the revelation you just caught. What is the revelation? The revelation is the fact that nothing just happens by flesh and blood until there is a spiritual understanding that backs the activity. Upon that revelation, I will build the structure of my church. That means for every time you will perform any activity, there must be a revelation that you build upon. Otherwise, the activity will just be normal. Are you getting this revelation? In other words, listen. I can lay hands, but the realm of the spirit will check. What revelation do I know that activates the power over this activity? If there is no revelation, power will not flow. It's a law in the spirit. Peter, I see that you have gotten a spiritual understanding. It is upon this understanding I will build my church to function. That means whatever they have to do, they will first build on a rock. A revelation must be the platform for any activity to be carried out. Communion without revelation, powerless. Anointing without revelation, powerless. So I can lay hands. I tell you, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost in a very mighty way. Zekete rata man protoso beka areke talata poka reposo to bariata. He said, "I will build my church upon a revelation." When you get this revelation, you will step into a realm where you become an envoy. Listen, listen. Listen to me. The Bible says a time came when Peter, James, and John, who became the pillars of the church, they went with Jesus. Is that true? To the Mount of Transfiguration. And the Bible says, listen, we were going to see the practical demonstration of that scripture. The Bible says they brought an epileptic patient. Everybody watch. Come, sir. They brought an epileptic patient. Now, it was the turn of the disciples to heal. Is that true? The Bible says they kept doing everything that Jesus did. Exactly. But nothing happened. Is that in your Bible? They did exactly. They saw Jesus doing everything. They did it. The guy didn't get healed. And when Jesus came down with three of the disciples... He saw his disciples struggling. That was what grieved his heart. He said, until now, because he knew it was a law, it would have happened without him anyway. And the Bible says, 
he looked at the boy he said since when did he have this condition and they said since he was a child he throws him into the fire throws him into whatever and he said i believe help thou my unbelief the father said and the bible says jesus rebuked a deaf and dumb spirit out of him and the bible says the guy was manifesting like you always see here and fell as though he was dead people thought he was dead and they picked him up and he got up he was sound the disciple said in one minute we did the same thing what did you do differently is it not the rebuking we also rebuked we rebuked him we were tired power did not flow i'm showing you the key why you have not been seeing the move of god it's not about cramming the words i use you will say the same thing and not see anything there is a secret hallelujah many people think it's about talking like the man of god or dressing like the man of god or reciting what the man of god is saying that will not bring power brothers and sisters when jesus did that and the demons obeyed him the disciples went and met jesus listen the disciples say ah, ah why couldn't we cast out the see when you are studying your bible when you see jesus about to reveal something pay attention the disciples were asking why they could not do these things and jesus said because of your unbelief very simple like that because of your unbelief then he says however this kind goeth not but by fasting and prayer hold on so he told them the problem was unbelief and he told them to remedy unbelief part of the spiritual activities that will happen is fasting and prayer when you fast and pray something happens in your spirit that brings you to a position where you can now believe listen just follow me i want to establish something very very powerfully when jesus did that listen a time came when jesus now said all right guys i have tested you a while he said go in my name go not everywhere but to the lordship of israel go two by two listen now it was their turn the bible says they went they were all fidgeting and they now looked at somebody and said in jesus name suddenly they saw the demon obey they said ah this thing is working oh they tried it again they saw that it worked they didn't even know what was happening and the bible says they returned rejoicing and said finally even they said even the demons were subject to us in thy name jesus said uh -uh, you have not gotten the point don't just rejoice that demons are subject to you rejoice because your name is you know is written in heaven and so on and so forth and then a time came listen jesus said as my father has sent me he said so send i you hold on it's not just saying nature there was a way i walked in the earth there was something that made those miracles to happen he said now i speak that let there be access to you to walk in those dimensions so that you'll be able to see those miracles that means listen please for every time you carry out a spiritual activity and it works let me tell you what happens in the spirit there is a system in the realm of the spirit that cross checks whether you understand what you were doing or not if there is no revelation that backs that activity power will not flow are you getting my point the sons of skiva they call that man they say we adore you the demon said not so i am seeing you in the spirit your house is built on sand where is the rock upon which this laying on of hands is built upon i do not see any revelation for that reason i will not go listen brothers and sisters do you know the power of this communion that we take people just take communion oh he's blessed and we take and nothing happens but the day you step into the revelation of what it can do the power of god will change that communion to the literal blood and body of jesus christ and it will answer in your body at once there are many christians 
trying to do spiritual motions without revelation and the bible told us about those people he said there were two people that built one built on a revelation a rock is that true another built on sand he was just building on religion the bible says now the wind came and tested it and the one who was built upon a rock revelation there was he was not just giving for nothing he was not just tithing for nothing there was an insight in the spirit that makes him to carry out that activity so i don't just pray in tongues because i'm seeing prayer band pray i'm praying on a rock there is a revelation i have come to know what prayer can do so every time i pray power flows through that revelation to edify my spirit and produce results this is why the prayer life of many christians is, is not working they humiliate themselves pray for hours and wonder why things don't happen what rock have you been laying hands on the sick upon what is the revelation that granted you access based on what did you prophesy to that brother and say in the name of jesus doors open what was the rock that supported that prophecy hallelujah when david was about to defeat goliath he knew that he cannot make empty noise and he said you come to me with your spares but i come to you in a name there is a name i know there is a covenant i have there is a revelation david and goliath on account of my covenant with jehovah i will take off your head and i know the power will flow and god said that is it you have gotten the equation now you bring out the sling how can an ordinary sling kill a man a revelation produce power envoys of power this is why you see all these things that are happening happening it will happen every time forever it's like a switch when you know how to turn it on you become an infant of fire so you enter anywhere you are an envoy you know how to compel powers to bow you know what to say to make them answer you you know what to say to make them leave you know what to say to dislodge the powers of darkness There is something you must know there are many preachers who preach they listen to a man of god's revelation they copied it and they are pasting it they preach a message that is supposed to bring healing but healing does not happen they preach a message that should bring breakthrough but breakthrough does not happen take your place take your place Take your place, 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 call his name, Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Hallelujah. Hear me. When I caught this revelation, I was excited. And the first time we had the opportunity to organize our crusade as a ministry, it was now the time to put this in practical proof. Hallelujah. And in that crusade ground, there were sick people. There were all kinds of oppressed people. And when we began to see the power and the glory of God, I said this thing works 
is not a lie the fault is not from god there is a fountain you can become a walking dispenser of the kingdom a dispenser of power when men shake you something will happen in your life because you are full of the word for everything there is a revelation even when you shake people you know that you are a blessing so that revelation will force something to get into them this may be the missing link behind your praying for the sick you have laid hands but you are just copying light has not come upon you there is no unction that supports what you are doing take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Yeah, 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 of your soul shall follow them not him them them a congregation a people who believe god enough to know that he's not playing when he says all power belongs to him he means it we are going to pray i like you to pray and say lord do something in my spirit that will cause light to enter me. I want to begin to see fruits. Come on now, pray. Koinonia, this is not how you pray. I want to see prayer warriors. I want to see men of prayer. Their 
I command you every yoke that has tied you down, every yoke that has tied your family down, every curse, every protection, let them pray, 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 there is power, when you pray, there is fire, when you pray, I command powers in the name of Jesus and Koinonia destinies are changed and Koinonia eyes are lifted and Koinonia generals are raised and voice of power and voice of grace Men of dexterity, men of authority, men of audacity, confronting case, confronting territory, without fear. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to pray for you. What many of us need is an unction from the Lord that will suddenly make the things you read become alive. It's a spirit. It's called the spirit of revelation. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. I want you to receive it inside and outside with all your heart it's time for you to begin to walk as an ambassador hallelujah i'm going to count three and at the count of three i'd like you to shout the name jesus and as you shout something will come upon your life are you ready one two three take it Take it, 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 receive it, the spirit of revelation, outside, take it, outside, let it come, like fire, eyes, be open, yes, be open, let the spirit of faith come upon you, Take it, faith to believe, faith to believe, faith to believe. Command miracles. Let blind eyes be open. Let deaf ears be open through your hands. Whoever you bless is blessed. Whoever you bless 
is blessed when you speak your words are backed up by an authority that is not of this realm your voice will be like the voice of God your voice will be like the voice of God whatever you stop will stop whatever you stop will stop whatever you find is bound whatever you lose is loose Envoys of his presence. I pray for you from today. Let the manifest presence of God, let the angel of his presence begin to walk with you. That everywhere you go, you don't need to tell men you are anointed. There is an angel of his presence that will go with you. Sinners will break down when they see you. Devils will cry out without you casting them. I proclaim upon you from tonight you become an envoy of power, an envoy of his presence, an envoy of his glory. Under the apostolic unction, I command as touching the grace given to me if I be sent of God. Let this mantle fall on as many people. Envoys of power. Envoys of power. Envoys of miracles. Envoys of wisdom. Envoys of breakthrough. Go and command breakthrough. Go and release your family members. The cause that has kept them. Go as a savior. Go and command marriages. Go and heal the barren. Let the barren be healed. Go and raise the dead. Go and raise the dead. Go and cast out devils. Prophesy business breakthrough to people. Prophesy career breakthrough. Your words carry power. Your hands carry power. Here at Koinonia, I stand as an apostle of God. And I proclaim, my God, the same power that backs me, let it back your people. The same authority that backs me, let it back your people. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. The journey of my life, listen to me please, has been a journey of progressive walk with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Listen to me please. Exactly a month ago, hear me, I was sleeping and the spirit of God woke me he said it's time for you to step into a new face of the anointing and a new face I always see it I see a military man in the spirit 
and then a batch is added and the Lord says there are many more responsibilities and there is an anointing and I prayed I said Lord you cannot just be empowering me alone your people need to walk in this kingdom power and all through the Lord had been brewing it in my heart and the Lord kept telling me it is my desire let your people believe me enough Moses said I desire that my spirit will even come upon everybody my greatest desire is not to be one invincible man of God no but that there will be people and you are these people to spread across hallelujah and from the time the spirit of the Lord told me this I knew that he increased the anointing upon my spirit and he measured a thousand cubits you can know you can see a man that walks with God and say this is different something has changed a thousand cubits and this is why whenever I receive it I make sure that everybody is a partaker of it if you don't walk with it it is not my fault but in the days to come as we prepare for next year you will see things that will surprise you when you are faithful with the level of grace that God gives unto you and you are diligent you will know and everybody around you will know when something a thousand cubit has been measured again and there is a rise this is why I worship him brothers and sisters don't get emotional about this meeting alone and don't get arrogant over the anointing you have received listen authority in the spirit is for you to go and be a blessing not to go and build an empire do not emulate these wrong things men of God try to bring to the body of Christ to make it look like there is one superstar let me tell you every one of us have been anointed and called whether in business whether in education these anointings are not just for healing the sick alone but opening people up to dimensions of the spirit and if you do not use this and you let it dormant it will dry up in your life hallelujah praise the Lord you are going to pray just one prayer point and we are going to round up you are going to say Lord this anointing I have received I want to see it working I'm tired of receiving things and falling down and I cannot say this is what happened please pray I beg you my brothers and sisters if you will pray this prayer from your heart say Lord bring a sick body to me bring an oppressed person to me oh God bring a sinner my way let me put this unction and this revelation to work bring a family my way I'm ready to work as an envoy of power pray and say Lord the things I'm taught in koinonia I don't just want to be a listener I want to be on fire there are many of you who just love God casually but today you are talking to the Lord and he's hearing you you are saying Lord I'm joining the band of spiritual people on fire hallelujah hallelujah I'm going to give you an assignment everyone here this week I want you to call every member of your family and tell them tell me one thing I have been taught in koinonia that I'm an envoy of power call your family members and say what are the issues I want to speak I'm not agreeing with you I am coming as an envoy this is not the issue of agree with me I am coming with an authority that is not of this realm whether they believe you or not you don't need to be hard on them listen sister 
Even if you look weak, everybody knows you to be a bad girl. Something has happened to you. Are you getting me? Don't let the devil take your yesterday and say, even you, you want to prophesy. Yes, even you. The Bible says when the spirit of God came upon Saul, he became another man. It is this another mind dimension that we are releasing you to go and manifest. That the people that have seen you, you are in a shop and people just see you sit down. Customers are not coming. And you say, mommy, watch what will happen. Father, just as I have been taught in the name of Jesus, I compel men to come and patronize this. And you sit back and suddenly you will see people coming out of everywhere. And you tell your family members, this is the signature of the kingdom the kingdom comes every time an envoy manifests the will of god so go to those families those barren people you know those neighbors you have never prayed for them because you are afraid you say the fibroid is too big or the person is totally blind just try it try it everybody young and old make this week the week that you take steps of faith you are seeing one sinner that God is always talking to you that this person will be a great person. You are afraid of confronting the person. Let this be the week that you go in love and tell the person, my brother, I need to talk to you. Jesus loves you. And you will be surprised that this same power, this is how you will see the person break down and you will be wondering what is happening. Hallelujah. You know somebody that has been writing jam, writing jam, writing wayek, writing wayek, and you know the person is serious. It's a different thing if the person is lazy. Or somebody that has always been stealing. Somebody fornicating every time. He loves God. He's trying to stop. You tell him, I now know what is wrong. I just want you to let me pray for you. And you say, Satan, thou foul devil of lust. You get out of his life. And you watch and see the transformation that comes from his life. Some of you need to go and lock the door and you be a prophet over your own life. Lay hands on yourself and begin to prophesy and say, Satan, an end has come. You are seeing your brother and sister. Their marriage is about breaking. No child. Now I have taught you here that barrenness is not a medical condition. Barrenness is a spiritual condition. It's a sign that there is a presence of a spirit in that place. And if you don't get that devil out of there, they will use every kind of medical therapy and it will not work. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now listen to me very quickly. Everybody, please stand on your feet, inside and outside. There are people here who need to make it right with Jesus Christ. There are people here who love the Lord with all their hearts. Please listen. Some of you have been going to church you have done a lot of spiritual things please listen especially for those outside but you have never made a decision for jesus christ you have heard preachers preach every time telling you that there is an assignment listen you are not a biological accident you were born for a reason not just for heaven alone but to be an envoy of his presence an envoy of grace an envoy of wisdom an envoy of creativity hallelujah tonight is that night when many of us will need to find rest there is no need arguing with destiny tonight is a night of destiny you can sit back and pretend as though everything is all right or you can say truly i need jesus christ in my life i have had preachers preach this again and again but i have not seen the need but right now the word of god has come and there is another category of people you have found yourself genuinely coming to the cross and giving your heart to the Lord. But the sincere truth is over time, you have derailed from the things of God. Such that there is even nothing that really shows that you are a Christian. Both categories, I'm going to pray for you. It's my pleasure to bring you to a place of rest. Wherever you are, shame on the devil tonight. Because finally you are going to accept the call of God. Don't let the devil take this opportunity. Remember, there is a prophetic destiny upon your life. I don't care what you have done or what you have not done. Men may condemn you, but there is love for you in this house. And tonight, we are standing in partnership with the Lord to say you can have a new beginning. Inside and outside, wherever you are, leave your seat and run out here right now. I want to pray for you. God bless you as you come. Don't wait for anybody. Don't be afraid. Inside and outside, God bless you. They are coming. 
They are coming. God bless you. Shame on the devil. Don't let your friends stop you. God bless you, sister. God bless you, brother. Outside, keep coming. There are people outside. Koinonia, appreciate them. Your sacrifice of a clap offering to them. God bless you. Keep coming. You are saying, Lord, tonight is the night of destiny. I have seen your wonders. And I know that there is a call upon my life. But clap for them. They are coming. Clap for them. They are coming. The Lord is bringing them. Keep clapping. They are coming. The devil is a liar. there are a few more people outside don't let the devil have you this night hallelujah hallelujah brothers and sisters I salute you for this great step of faith in one minute I'd like you to talk to the Lord with your own words go ahead don't let the devil bring any voice of condemnation I don't care what you have done for every time you come to Jesus Christ there is love there is a new beginning Talk to the Lord right now in your own words. And those of us in the congregation, pray for them. Pray for them right now. Pray for them, inside and outside. If you're outside, stretch your hands towards the screen and pray for them. This is a place of salvation. This is a place of equipping. Thank you, Jesus. Labrida shila makuriata baka saprata katapala tapakasa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you in front, look at me. My brothers and my sisters, I love you with all my heart and I salute you for this bold decision. I want you to lift your right hand. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Lift your right hand very high in a way you will never forget for the rest of your life. And say after me from the depths of your heart, say, Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart. I admit that I'm a sinner and I believe that you died for me. This night, I have heard your word that there is an assignment upon my life. I repent of my sins. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. From tonight, I am a new person with a new life and a great destiny. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I refuse to go back to my past. Forward ever, backward never. Holy Spirit, come and live in me. Make me an envoy of your presence. Let me be a blessing to my generation. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now keep your hands lifted. Let me pray for you. Father. You see the hands of your children. I pray that the power of sin over their life is broken. I pray that whatever entangles them and takes them into the world, that power is broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. From today, you will begin to experience the power of God in your life. You will begin to experience the life of God in your life. You will cease to be ordinary from today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will go back and see the things that used to be challenges for you. You will see them surmounted already. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please put down your hands and listen. Thank you so much for making this great decision. I'd like you to follow the usher. He will lead you and will have your details. We would like to follow you up. Um, let's make it Monday. Let's make it Monday, okay? Monday by 5 p.m. Please come around the chapel, close to the chapel book stand, inside the chapel. I'll be there to meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. We'll follow you up and pray for you. We'll have your details and the protocol will send you an SMS to guide you and remind you. Appreciate them as they go. Just follow.